I'm John Skinner, and, and boy, I've got a lot to show in this video. Yeah, we're going to do some clamming, but uh, something really different is we're going to take a look at this clamming um, underwater, get the underwater view of this, and I found this to be very educational, and I really learned something from this. Uh, we're going to compare two different rake heads. Uh, we're going to look at a new underwater video camera, and uh, at the end of all this, we're going to cook clams, uh, do them a little differently than we did last time, and uh, we'll be steaming them. So, lots to show. So, yeah, look, I'm, I'm really on the clams here. Uh, I've been poking around a little bit the last few weeks and come to the conclusion that if I want to get a lot of clams, I have to get away from the places that are very easily accessible. So, the ones where you just, you know, pull off on the side of the road and go clamming. Yeah, they seem to be tapped out. Um, so, I've been using my kayak and... Uh, paddling over some places that are uh, more difficult to get to and it's it, the clamming is definitely way better there so uh, yep this is a good trip and uh, we're gonna get to look at this from different angles and here we go here is the underwater view of what you're gonna see okay so this is a very hard bottom very difficult for me to get into and um, yeah but you can see I've got that rake it's really dredging up some bottom you saw a clam go in there now there's a lot of rocks a lot of stuff going into the rake so you know what's happening is you're getting spillage out the ends because you can only fit so much stuff in there but yeah look at this you know this this rake is loaded um the, the hard bottom is really something to contend with and what i'm pretty much doing is um going over the bottom i don't see multiple times but i'm working along the edges of, of stuff that i've already raked a little bit just to help get into it but you did see you know that rake penetrated very nicely we're going to get to see that again um you're also going to see here where uh yeah you know i've i've so you, you, this clams that spill out the side of the basket because um, you know, sometimes the basket is so loaded with stuff, especially rocks, um, that there's no room for them to go in. But the important thing that I want to point out here is that that basket is really getting up, you know, underneath the bottom. And, you know, there you go. There's clams in there. But, yeah, for sure, uh, you saw some clams spill out the side. So, um, you know, I, I know that's happening, so I thought to myself, well, first of all, this is an old rake. My father left me. I, things looks like it's on its last leg. I figure I, I'm going to get a new rake. So there's the old rake on the right. Uh, so nine teeth. The teeth are spaced at one and an eighth inches, the gaps between them, although it looks uh, a little uneven there and bent. Oh, and there's the beautiful new rake to the left. Uh, Twelve teeth, wider basket. Uh, curved teeth, uh, the same length, these are three inch teeth, they're spaced one inch apart. Boy, how can that not do better than that old rusty rake? And the handle on this new rake is a, a foot longer than the other one. This has got a six foot handle, the other one was a five foot handle. But boy, you know, the uh, I'm just ha really having an issue trying to penetrate through all these rocks. And I think it's a matter of the fact that there, there's more teeth. They're tighter spaced. It's just simply harder to penetrate. This is probably a spectacular rake in mud, in sand, but um, on the rocks, the rake with the um, with less teeth, a little wider space, just penetrates this bottom a lot better. And um, yeah, after 15 minutes of trying this thing, um, I went back to the old one, and uh, that seems to be the, the right setup for this kind of a bottom. And that funny angle you see there is just because the camera's a little twisted on the handle. So this is the GoFish cam, and I'm kind of excited about this. It's pretty neat. Uh, first of all, it's a full HD underwater video camera shooting 1080p video. Uh, it's got some very interesting features. One of them is, check this out, it's got a very bright light that you can turn on and use it for night video. Now, I've played around a little bit with this in the dark, and sure enough, it, it does light up the field of view. So, um, yeah, I fully expect to be able to uh, shoot some underwater night video with this. And uh, that's neat. But for the purpose of this video, I, I want to point out the wireless feature that this is actually a wireless camera. And um, with the smartphone app provided, you can um, control the camera. You can change its settings. But what to me is most important is while I'm on the water, I can review the video that I've captured 
by using their smartphone app. So let's take a look at that. So pretty much all I need to do is run the app that comes with the camera and that's this GoFish Cam. Now this is nice because there's a couple taps and we'll get connected to the camera. Uh, I could use this to start and stop recording. I could use this to change settings but what I'm most interested in here is that I can click and see the video that's been recorded. So imagine you're out, you're fishing, you use this camera for a bit, you've dropped it down, you wonder you know, what it is that's down there. Hey, with this, you, know, you can find out. So I've got some videos on here, and I'll just select one, and off it goes. And hopefully this shows up okay on the video that I'm showing. But yep, yeah, there's uh, my clam rake, and uh, we get to see what's going on down there. And I can imagine this being really valuable fishing, because... I've shot a lot of underwater video and always have to wait until I get home to look at it and I, I can tell you this is times I, where I wish I had been able to see it when I'm out on the water and you know, now I can. Um, now this does not transmit, there's a clam going up in there, that's nice. This does not transmit the video from underwater to above the water. Um, but once the camera is out of the water then you can connect to it and they do have a float that uh, you could point this camera down the back end would be sticking up out of the water and then you could actually look at um, live video from underwater as the camera is floating but you know what even this feature of just being able to look at what's uh, been recorded while I'm still out on the boat uh, that's really nice so that's a, a neat part about this camera okay before we get to the cooking let's uh, take one last look at, at successful clamming with back with that old rake and uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just leaning on this thing, trying to, you know, get those teeth in. Sh clearly that underwater video is showing that, um, you know, the, the basket is filling. It, it is getting down. And, you know, here is exactly that shot, looking at that underwater view. And, um, yeah, that was very interesting to me to see it not work, to see the, uh, the new rake with the... Uh, closer space teeth, more teeth, wider basket to see that you know, really underperform this rake uh, in this circumstance. But uh, So here we go. I'm, I'm able to keep 100 clams. Oh, and you see I, I've you know, got a real basket now and, uh, and a float tube, and this is the, the proper way to be dealing with clams. And yeah, I get to keep 100, and uh, that's that. So uh, now we're off to cook them. Okay, we're going to steam them, and this is real simple. I like simple stuff. Uh, these are all the ingredients, the clams, uh, scarlet powder, olive oil, and a beer. And, and the beer is not for drinking. Uh, the, the beer is for cooking. Uh, certainly beer will go well with the finished product, though. Uh, you know what? This is just a couple of tablespoons of the olive oil. Yeah, it looks like a lot of uh, garlic powder. It's like almost a tablespoon. I like the garlic. And, uh, but that's going to get diluted out. So, uh, yeah, put a lot in there stir it around. I'm going to stir for about a minute or so. You So it's uh, it's on kind of like a low medium heat and uh, kind of simmering getting in there. You know once you can really start smelling it yeah then it's, it's ready to go. Um, I, I meant to flatten this beer more but just uh, forgot to open it. Uh, I it have been sitting out for a couple hours but it's okay. It, it, it's all good. Pour that in there and uh, yeah now all I need to do is add the clams and I don't want to make a big mess uh, dumping them in there so I'll take some handfuls and so these are the smaller clams uh, from the catch uh, since I'm gonna steam them uh, the, the smaller ones work best for this and I ended up that that little bowl's got like 45 clams in there so this is the smaller and last time I, I did a cooking one we showed the medium the cherry stones these are called necks okay so put them in there crank the heat up and uh, put her cover on. This is maybe six or seven minutes later. You see some things just starting to open. You know, give, give it a shake here and there. And, uh, and this is maybe two minutes after that. Now I'm seeing clams are opening. And uh, yeah, I don't want to leave them in too long. I don't want them to get tough. So look, I just saw one open right there. And uh, I'll just start picking them out one by one, pick out the open ones. And you know what? Once there's a couple that are open and you start pulling them out, well, the other ones will follow. And uh, by the time you fill up those bowls, everything will be done. And steam clams go great either with melted butter or with cocktail sauce, whatever your choice is. So if uh, you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.